What's going on everybody? Uh, welcome to the third part of my uh, Photoshop for web developers, take 10. Um, this time around we're going to be looking at uh, working with text and text inside of a PSD. A lot of times you're going to be provided a PSD with a lot of copy in it. Um, don't make the mistakes I've made in the past and uh, type out text that's in a PSD and uh, get called out for misspelling something. Um, it's best to pull it straight out of the, the design files um, because it's most likely copied into there from somewhere else. Um, so protect yourself and copy, uh, copy straight out of the PSD. And so we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at the various text tools and um, text sizing and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, back into our Photoshop file. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you guys see where I'm actually working. I'm gonna come down to uh, one of these uh, elements and uh, I'm going to select our text tool um, which is on the left side of the screen in our toolbar and I'm simply just going to click inside of our text um, now what is presented in front of us is kind of a compatibility issue um, I don't have this Carla bold um, and Carla regular. This is going to happen a lot with Photoshop. Um, a lot of times, uh, our, your creative team may be working on Macs, and you're working on Windows, or you're working with something that came from a print ad, and may not have the same font that you're that's uh, web compatible with what you're working with. Um, so, if that happens, you're going to get a prompt like this. Just click OK. Um, not a huge deal. And so, um, as I'm I'm, from here I'm actually able to highlight the text um, and if you look over into our character window um, you'll see all the various um, replacement um, the replacement the default replacement font for it um, we have the font size and the line height um, also the font weight and a few other features that we can't really replicate on the web um, so the this top um, drop down bar um, I don't think I can. No, I can't click. Oh well, um, the top left drop down bar is all your fonts. The top right one is um, a bunch of various uh, text transformations of bold, italic, um, semi bold, um, all that. Uh, in our first row of uh, actual values, we have our font size and then our line height. Um, which is extremely approximate. It doesn't really match what we uh, what we use inside the web browser. The other two are uh, variables that we have no control over in CSS that I'm aware of. And then we have some text transforms of um, scalings, which I never mess with, a superscript um, piece, and then our color. And so if, uh, for instance, if, if I hide this text and then click this color box, I'm presented with a color picker to actually be able to change the color of this text. Now it's not. I'll show you about that in a little bit. And I'm just going to disable that because I don't. Bam. There we go. Um, I'll explain how that works later. Um, and so I can now change that the color of that text to whatever I want through this, um, through our character window. Okay. So let's say, for instance, we're cutting this out into a website. Um, you can do typical. Uh, keyboard commands of control A to select the whole thing, control C to copy it. Now I'm going to go over here in notepad and simply paste that in. Now I want you to pay attention to something really fast and so um, let's look where our line breaks are. It's going to be this DOS consecutor or whatever that is which is right about here. So I'm going to start navigating to the right. If you noticed on my cursor which may have been hard And it's totally not working. Yay. Um, long story short, um, the DOS uh, constructor or whatever it is, um, there is an extra um, there's an extra key press in there needed to go through. So there, Photoshop has injected a character in there that we can't see in um, Notepad. Um, I don't know why. It's one of those DOS Unix uh, character styles. A little bit of, a little bit of something I just 
never, we typically never worry about. Um, so what I'm going to do instead of copying this into Notepad is, is to copy it into GVim, and it's actually going to show the character that's uh, the offending character. Now this is really the only, you can barely see that on your screen, there is a, a caret M uh, plugged in there. Um, I wonder if Notepad++ shows it. No. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, Notepad++ actually keeps the uh, it keeps the uh, carriage return, so it's respecting the the character. Um, but anyway, um, inside of something like Visual Studio or notepad you won't see this character and so it's good to go to a lower level editor to, to see this to take care of it um, sometimes in browsers this shows up as a white square box and so that's that's something that to pay attention to while um, uh, um, when cutting and pasting into a uh, your uh, HTML so um, back to um, cutting and pasting text um, we can adjust our line height um, through our, our uh, box on the right. Um, typically, uh, I use CSS to control this. I fairly, pretty much ignore what we have inside of this box. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Um, so let's just go ahead and go over um, some some of the measuring tools. Um, if we want this uh, paragraph block to show up exactly how we want, we're going to need to utilize a couple of the, the measuring tools um, so that we can make sure our container elements are the right size. So what uh, what you can see I'm moving around on it are these, these are called guides. Um, and you can access them by clicking on view. Um, and then there towards the bottom there is a guide. Uh, we're going to create a new guide. Um, I'm going to zoom out first uh, so that we can see it better. Um, view, new guide. From here we can select horizontal or vertical. I'm going to do a vertical one at 100 pixels. So this is just going to be the starting position. And you can use your move tool, which is the very first um, tool in your toolbar. This is the one you'll typically have selected the most. And you can drag it uh, wherever you need. So I typically have it at a low, um, a low pixel, so that I can I know where I'm creating it initially. And so uh, you may notice that as I'm um, dragging it towards the text, it's kind of snapping right on the edge of this box. Now there is a um, there's an option for this. A lot of the times I find this pretty annoying because it applies to the cropper, the slice tool, the marquee tool. Um, it's called snap. So we can disable that, and we can it uh, prevents it from auto snapping to the corner of a of a, a solid shape or element. Um, this is um, sometimes this is great, but it's also incredibly frustrating if you're uh, not wanting uh, to exactly do that. If you're trying to uh, drop shadows, usually um, mess that up too. So anyway, I'm going to just get an approximation. I'm going to use these guides. Um, and I'm going to use my marquee tool. Um, this is a very uh, unique tool. Um, there's a, it has a lot of utilities behind it. What I use it for is I just call it the ghetto measuring tool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and you'll notice that uh, it snaps to um, our guides. Now um, uh, this is just kind of a rough estimate but if we go over to our info window on the top right hand side we see a width and a height of 181 uh, width and 70 height so what I can do is extract this into uh, CSS so I have a good idea um, the height of my container um, or I could for instance um, select the height and width of our box um, for this button which is 55 by 18 um, and so that's that's pretty much uh, the extent of the marquee tool that I'll use. Um, if you ever get stuck in the position where you uh, have something selected, sometimes uh, tools don't work properly if something's selected. Select you just press um, Control D, and uh, it will disable the. Uh, it'll it'll um. Hurrah! It'll just uh, de uh, deselect the marquee. So let's let's go ahead and do that again with with Karnak. 
installed it, of course. Um, gosh. Okay. There we go. Um, let's see how all this works. Um, control D. Wow. Let's go. Oh, I was changing the width, not the opacity. Yeah. Um, so anyway, highlight something or uh, select something and then press D. Um, now recently I found out about a pretty simplistic tool that I should have known about a long time ago. There's actually a ruler tool. Um, this is a little bit uh, handier than the marquee tool. It uh, provides two dimensional or uh, one dimension measuring of from point to point. So for instance here I'm going to click on my guide and then drag to our other guide and it's going to snap to them um, and then uh, it's going to provide us the actual width of it up in our, our top window. Now the one thing that's extremely handy with this um, compared to the marquee tool is that it's actually resizable. Um, if you click on one of your anchors you can, um, so if you get just a few pixels off you can reposition it and uh, get a good uh, uh, idea of what the measurements are. It also hangs around a little bit longer than the marquee tool. Um, nothing overly fancy. But, uh, but incredibly useful. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for, uh, for this on uh, kind of measuring around and working with text. Uh, there's a few other things we can work with with the canvas, but I think I'm gonna hold off and do that on the layer section. So anyway, uh, thanks for uh, the time. Uh, and uh, the next video we're gonna be doing, um, actually cutting out an image using the crop tool and the slice tool. So uh, we will see you on the next one.